Okay, we're live, folks. Monica Corrado here, the Gap Chef. I am happy, happy, happy to be here with you. It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. <clears throat> it is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it is Tuesday, August 1st. Whoa. Welcome to August, everyone. Uh, I am here. Uh, this is Ask the Gap Chef. I am Monica Corrado, the Gap Chef. Um, I am happy to be here with you once a week to uh, talk about everything gaps. So, Tuesday mornings, 11.30 Mountain Time, and uh, we'll go for about one hour, and I will answer your questions about the GAPS diet. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my joy to be here, and um, hopefully everyone will uh, learn a little something uh, from this uh, this time together. So, um, one more time with feeling. I am not a medical doctor. I do not uh, prescribe anything. Uh, nothing I talk about has anything to do with healing. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I do my best during these lives to make sure that everyone, that whatever I say w is accurately representing uh, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride and her work and uh, my understanding of her work in the gut and psychology syndrome and the gut and physiology syndrome. So the yellow book, yellow book, the blue book, which is over there, the red book, the green book. All right. In any case, you get the picture. So today, hello Kathleen, and hello everyone else that's here. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get the notice up early, but here we are, life is busy, and uh, expect that I will show up at about 11.30 on Tuesdays, 11.30 Mountain Time. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, what I thought we would continue today is to talk about the Intro Diet Stage 3, because last week... I covered intro stage one and intro stage two, and today I will cover intro stage three. However, I thought what I might do is go and talk a little bit. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about what Dr. Natasha has to say about implementing the diet. I'm in the yellow book. Hey, Alejandra, good to see you. Um, I am in the yellow book, page 142, for anyone who wants to follow along. Um, I'm hoping that you all can hear me well today. Please let me know. If someone could give me a thumbs up that the audio is good, that would be great. Just throw one in there. That would be awesome. All right. I hope the audio is good. I'm now using my headset because and my computer because it seems to give a better... Um, better video, better audio quality for everybody. All right, so <sighs> great, Tara. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's just see. I thought I would start with this fabulous, just a couple of things that Dr. Natasha goes over that would be good for us to go over regarding intro. Number one, large amounts of nourishing substances for the gut lining. The intro, di the intro diet, the introduction diet is designed to heal and seal the gut lining quickly. That's the operative word here, folks. We know that if you need to start in full gaps for all the reasons I talked about last week, um, that's fine and healing will happen uh, because of all the things you're doing. But the intro diet is designed to heal and seal the gut lining quickly. That is the operative word. Okay, why? Because number one, large amounts of nourishing substances for the gut lining are in intro, provided in intro, amino acids, gelatin, glucosamines, fats, vitamins, minerals, etc., 
all the things that the gut lining is made from are in intro. Number two, the majority of GAPS people have inflammation and ulcerations in their gut lining. Ulcerations are boo-boos. I know. Scientific over here. All right. Which they may not be aware of as they do not always produ produce particular symptoms. Okay, so you may, the gut lining may be sore and very sensitive. GAPS introduction diet removes fiber and any other substances which may irritate the gut and interfere with healing. I like to call fiber sandpaper on the gut. I call it that all the time. Sandpaper on an open wound. Why do we keep uh, fiber out of intro? Because we don't want to open up these boo-boos. We don't want to open up the wounds in the uh, small intestine and in the gut lining. Okay, third, Dr. Natasha says that the cell regeneration process in the gut lining is ruled and orchestrated by beneficial bacteria. Did we hear that? Let's do that again. The cell regeneration process in the gut lining is ruled by beneficial, ruled and orchestrated. La, la, da, 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 da. That means, right, like orchestrated, it's coordinated, it's orchestrated, it's ruled by beneficial bacteria. So they normally live on the surface of the gut lining. Without their presence, there cannot be healing. Without the presence of beneficial bacteria, there cannot be any healing. Did we all hear that? Without the presence of beneficial bacteria, there cannot be any healing. Whoa, that's a huge statement, right? So we're going to heal and seal with meat stock and all of those fabulous, fabulous nutrients in meat stock. And we're going to rebuild the digestive flora, the gut flora, with cultured dairy and fermented tonics and fermented foods. All right. GAPS introduction diet provides probiotic bacteria in good form right from the start. Woohoo! I love that. So, straight from Dr. Natasha. So let's talk about stage three because we did stage one and two last week. Um, let's see. Hello! Hello, Leonie Green. Would you feel it if you had wounds in the gut lining? I love raw food and fibers like flax, and I don't feel. Nope, you may not feel it. You may not feel it. Most people don't feel it, frankly. Now, if you have an ulcer, that's a different op. That's a different thing, right? An ulcer, meaning an ulcer that was caused by too much stomach acid overproduction of stomach acid. Um, then you would feel that as a burning, or you could feel that as a burning. Um, a lot of people never feel this uh, whole thing about, yeah. So really, intro diet, we know that raw food and fiber, like flax, is not showing up anywhere before we hit stage five. Faria asks me, hello, is it problematic to infuse the three T's overnight and consume the next day? Nope, it's perfect. It's a long time, though. Most of those teas do not need to be infused overnight. I mean, they only need minutes, really. Maybe 30 minutes at the most, most, most. Okay, let's get to stage three, folks. So you all know about this fabulous, yeah, chart that you all have access to, free download in this group. Um, go ahead and check that out. Under featured posts, it's called the GAPS Intro Diet Chart. And we are on stage three. And so we know that we move from stage to stage once we can tolerate all of the foods in the previous stage. One caveat, of course. The caveat being, if there's a food in the previous stage that you have an anaphylactic rea uh, reaction to, such as eggs, if you have an anaphylactic reaction to eggs, then you're not going to wait on stage two until you clear that allergy, 
right? These are just about food sensitivities, etc. Okay, so stage three, we are going to do always all the foods from stage one, all the foods from stage two, and we're going to go ahead and move on to stage three. In stage three, we add in ripe avocado. We add in ripe avocado. We start with a very small amount. Dr. Natasha's usual very small amount is a teaspoon. If you need to do less, go ahead and do less. If you think you can do more, start with a teaspoon and then increase. So when we add ripe avocado, uh, ripe avocado into soups, we mash it into the soup and we eat it that way. In fact, folks, if you're going to add anything new, we add it into the soup, for example, anything, let's say you're in stage two and you're adding in egg yolks, uh, you would go ahead and add it into the soup. You wouldn't just try egg yolk in your mouth. Just like we're not just going to try nut butter in our mouth when we get to stage three. We're going to put it in something. We're going to put it in something. So, so avocado will be mashed and then we'll put, be put into soup and then you try it and see how you tolerate it. You start with one teaspoon a day, then you can work your way up to three teaspoons a day, which is a tablespoon, and then increase to a half an avocado or whatever. Um, we want to get to make sure that you can tolerate avocado. All right, <clears throat> so. I'm going to keep going and I'll come back to questions. Hello, Ianella. Hello, hello. Okay. The next thing after avocado, when we when we know that we tolerate avocado, that and how do we know we tolerate it? No symptoms, no gas, no bloating, no diarrhea. We remember that avocado is a fat. And so what could happen is loose bowels. If you don't tolerate avocado, for sure. <clears throat> so once we tolerate avocado, we will move on to nut butter pancakes. Whoa. So we always start with nuts, as in almonds or another nut, nut butter pancakes. If you can't tolerate nut butter, we start with seed butter, such as sunflower seed or pumpkin seed. The best way to do this always is to make your own. The best way to make your own is to either soak in water and salt or sprout or ferment those nuts or seeds before you pulverize them into butter. And then we take that nut butter, we add some eggs, which we now we know we tolerate because we are, we graduated stage three. And we also add in some squash. Now, if you add in summer squash like courgette or zucchini, right? We need to peel, seed, cook, and mash that zucchini or courgette or summer squash before it goes into a nut butter pancake. Um, if we're going to use a winter squash, such as acorn or uh, kabocha or um, what's another good one? Butternut. Can, you can absolutely try butternut on stage three. The question is whether or not your you or your child can tolerate the amount of carbohydrate in butternut squash. Very high carb. So try it. Um, if it doesn't work for you, then switch to a different type of squash. Squash. So these nut butter pancakes are uh, fried in more good animal fat. Um, I always suggest that people make them the size of a, I don't know, we call this a silver dollar, you know, a golf ball, something small. Start with one and then the next day start with one and then the next day have another one and then see if you tolerate them or your child tolerates them. Um, Nuts can be problematic in intro. Even when we soak, sprout, or ferment them and turn them into nut butter 
and take that nut butter and make it into pancakes um, with the squash and the eggs. Uh, they can be problematic. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, people can be constipated on nuts, even as nut butter pancakes. So watch the digestive system. It can also go the other way with diarrhea. So it could be constipation, could be diarrhea. We don't know. What's your usual? Um, we also know two th more things about nuts. One, nuts can feed yeast. So if you have a lot of yeast imbalance like candida, 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 yeast, then you might want to watch how much, uh, how many nuts you bring in, see if you flare, etc. The other difficulty with nuts that Dr. Natasha writes on in the blue book is that nuts can not only feed yeast, can suppress the immune system. So do you want to be eating nuts if your immune system is already low? No. All right, so that's the nut butter pancake difficulties, folks. So if you can't deal with, if you can't handle almond butter pancakes uh, that you have either soaked or sprouted or fermented the almonds, and then you've pulverized into nut butter, then try again, try with either sunflower seeds or uh, pumpkin seeds. Those usually work very well. Same thing, soak them or sprout them or ferment them and then pulverize them. So just so everybody's clear, this is a lot of information about nuts and nut butter. I go into it very clearly in my last section of my book on seeds, the book, The Complete Cooking Techniques for the GAPS Diet. So um, yeah, that's a great place to learn all of these techniques, how to do it, etc., etc. All right, so there's your nut butter thing. Um, nut butter pancakes, stage three. Once you know that you can handle both, tolerate is a good word, you're tolerating with no digestive symptoms, you are tolerating avocado, you're having a half an avocado a day, you're doing great, you're having nut butter pancakes, you know, one or two a day, no problems, no diarrhea, no bloating, no constipation, no flare of any symptom. Then we move into scrambled eggs and fried eggs. Oh boy, this is a fabulous moment to get to. You're not just having soft boileds in stock for in stage two anymore. Now you can fry the eggs, scramble the eggs. Um, the preferred way to do this is to saute onions in four or more tablespoons of good fat, healthy fat, ghee, butter, lard, tallow, duck fat, uh, you name it, good healthy fat, not uh, olive oil, of course, not um, uh, any other plant oil. You can use coconut oil, but it shouldn't be the only thing that you use. Please use the other animal fats. So. Four tablespoons is a quarter cup, folks. That's a lot, lot, lot. That's half a stick of butter for your onions. And then you scramble the eggs and cook them in there, right? Or you fry the eggs. And then, Dr. Natasha likes to say, then you scrape the whole pot, all the fat goes right on your plate and you eat it all. That's a lot of fat, it's a lot of nutrition. So do not be afraid of using half a stick of butter or four tablespoons of some other fat when you're sauteing those onions, which are very good for digestion, in stage three prior to either frying your eggs or scrambling your eggs in that stage. Now, I just want to make a, a little comment about this. The most nutrition is going to come from raw egg yolks. That's why we start with, well, that's not just why we start with them, with raw egg yolks, but the most nutrition comes from raw egg yolk or runny egg yolk. So you can go ahead and have scrambled eggs as of stage three, but remember the nutrition is in the yolk that is runny. So if you're going to have scrambled eggs, have them, but make sure I always suggest 
that my uh, clients make sure that they're continuing to have raw egg yolks in what they're every day. They're just phenomenally nutritious and delicious for you. Okay, very, very importante. You can also saute other vegetables with your eggs. What would you like? Mushrooms? Yum! Mushrooms and onions and eggs. Phenomenal. Delicious. Greens? Spinach and onions and eggs. Chard and onions and eggs. Fabulous. Delicious. Yummy. All right. So what else happens in stage three? The next thing you do is you actually introduce the um, fermented vegetables. What does that mean? If you were hanging out in stage one, remember, stage one, we're using the juice of the fermented vegetables. So you're using sauerkraut juice, literally the juice from sauerkraut. You can substitute cabbage tonic or beet kvass. Those two things are in featured posts. The recipes are there for you if you'd like them. Um, but at stage three, you'll notice each stage, we're challenging the digestive system a little bit more. Each stage, right, we're going to bring in more challenging di uh, cooking techniques. So in stage three, not only are we bringing in um, nut butter pancakes and sauteed vegetables, we're also bringing in fermented vegetables the vegetables from the ferments. That means stage three, you're starting to eat sauerkraut. Stage three, you're starting to eat um, any fermented vegetables. You could make gingered carrots. You can make fermented beets. You could make fermented anything, really, fermented vegetables, um, and start actually eating the vegetables, remembering, of course, that Fermented vegetables are probiotic foods, and all probiotic foods can cause die-off. And die-off will look different for each person. So, um, you know, die-off can look like exhaustion. It can look like moodiness. It can look like rage. It can look like um, joint pain. It can look like headache migraine, it can look like um, flu symptoms, cold symptoms, all sorts of things, runny nose, you name it, die off, right? So just remembering that as we bring in now the vegetables from those ferments, we, whenever we bring in new things, new fermented foods, new probiotic foods, you can experience die off. Die off is not a bad thing. I was just talking with a client this morning. Die-off is not a bad thing. Die-off is a fabulous thing. What we Meaning, why? Because that means that the bad guys, pathogenic bacteria, are dying off. Yay! But what we don't want to do is we do not want to have so much die-off. I don't. I mean, maybe you're a kamikaze yapster. That's my new, uh, <laughs> that's my new little phrase, kamikaze yapster. Who's that? That's somebody who's like, just barreling through. I don't care if I die off. I'm going to be sick for a week, but then I'll be all better. Right? That's my new kamikaze. So I would prefer you not be a kamikaze ga uh, gapster, but some people like that. We need to manage the die off. I encourage you to manage die off, meaning if you need to back off the amount of probiotic food you're eating because you're too tired, because you you're, head, you're having too many headaches because your brain fog is too high because you can't function, then no problem. Good, right? All right. So as you all know, how when do we graduate to stage four? When we tolerate all of the foods in stage three. That means that we're eating avocado, no problem. I can have a half of one. I can have a quarter of one. I can eat the whole thing. It doesn't bother me. I feel good. I'm eating nut butter pancakes. No problems, no bloating, no difficulty, nada, no diarrhea, no constipation. I'm eating eggs in all that fat and sopping it all up and loving it, no problem. I'm eating fermented vegetables, again, no problem. I'm not seeing fermented vegetables in my stool. I hope everybody's checking their stool. 
make sure you're actually digesting these things. Yeah. Then and only then do we move to stage four. I would say stage three has got to take at least, I don't know, two weeks minimum. If you're doing it, if you're listening to your body and you're doing it well and right. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Tara asks, would you say anxiety would be a sign of die off? Absolutely. Yes. Remembering that um, toxins can have a definite, definite mood, a definite impact on your mood. Anxiety, <gasps> right? Anxiety. Yeah. If we can have rage from die off, we could have anxiety from die off. Sadness, rage, anxiety, mood swings, die off, ba ding, ba ding, ba ding, right? I feel great. I feel lousy. I'm really pissed. I'm really happy. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Let's see what's going on up here. Hello, Karen. I hope you're still with us. Hello, Karen, beautiful lady. Okay. Hello, Faria. Okay, Faria asks me, do, she asked me twice because she thought I missed it. Do you think gapsters ex accept, ah, less die-off symptoms from chicken stock? Yeah. Do you think that gapsters accept chicken stock better than beef, lamb, meat stock? Yes. That can absolutely be part of what's happening. <clears throat> we often start, we meaning GAPS practitioners and people on the GAPS diet, Dr. Natasha suggests, you know, start with a chicken. Chicken is easier. Somehow it's, it's milder. It's milder on the taste buds. It's milder on the digestion, all those things. So yes, you can start with chicken stock and then move on to turkey stock and then move on to one of the mammals, lamb stock, pork stock or not. Um, uh, beef stock, bison stock, anything you've got. <clears throat> yes. Unless, of course, you're on, um, unless you're on no plant gaps, the official no plant gaps, there's no beef, right? We don't do any beef on no plant gaps, according to the blue book where it was first published. Yay. Okie dokie. Let's see what else. Leonie wants to, Green wants to know, how do you know if... How do you know you tolerate food if not by how you feel? Mm, good question. So I was talking about you're not going to feel the scraping of the fiber in your stomach. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, you absolutely know if you tolerate food by the way you feel, but usually that's exhaustion, that's headache, that's bloating, that's diarrhea, that's constipation, that's all those things, that's mood swings, right? But you're not going to feel, in my understanding of what Dr. Natasha, what we just read, you are not going to feel um, the fiber on the inside of the gut lining. I hope that's helpful. All right, let's see. Wow, should I stop with my grated fresh coconut with the brown peel? Up to you. So I don't know your story. I don't know where you've been. I don't know how long you've been doing gaps. Um, you know, if you've been doing gaps, you did gaps intro and you did it well, meaning you did it for a good long time, maybe six months, four months, six months, and then you got onto full gaps. And now you've been on full gaps for a year. Yeah, probably fine with grated fresh coconut with brown peel. If you haven't done all those things, I, I wouldn't suggest it. That's just me. I would also be checking to see what your, um, again, folks, I'm really on to stomach acid these days. So check your bowels, right? If there's ever any, um, if there's ever any uh, food, undigested food in your stools, then you're not ready for whatever you're eating, right? Bad histamine intolerance seem fine with raw vegetables though. So I got to say, if anyone has bad histamine, this is just the word according to Monica, but if anyone has a bad histamine intolerance, it's back to back to intro diet as far as I'm concerned, if you are working with me. 
and it would be slowly working those uh, stages until that until we know that the gut is healed and sealed and the histamine response is tolerable. Right? Okay. Marta. Hello, Marta. Biggest advice for working with a baby with allergy to dairy and soy. Oh, no problem. We have babies like that all the time. Now, we need to know, is it an, first of all, yay that your child has an allergy to soy. I mean, not really, but soy is not anything that anyone should be eating. Unless you live in Asia and you're doing it a traditional way and it's been in your diet forever and you're eating things that are organic and they're not genetically modified, blah, 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 right? But for everybody else on the planet, soy is not the best option. So I don't think that your child having a problem with soy is a problem. Hello, Laura. Yeah, Leonie. My stools are a weird yellowy. Yep. Yeah. All right, I have to, I'll get back to you in a moment. Hello, Misha. Hello, mm. Um, Sumeya. Okay, let's get back to Marta here. So, then I'll get back to the rest of you. So, in terms of a baby that ha now the question, Marta, is: Is the baby anaphylactic to dairy? If that child is not anaphylactic to dairy, then, um, if uh if your uh, child is not anaphylactic to dairy then we know that the gaps diet heals and seals number one and we also work with dairy we only work with cultured dairy in fact marta i would go back and look at on my youtube um okay you are best yes okay no problem so that means that you need to be watching the dairy that you're having marta um let me just say, no, I'll say it differently, so many moms and so many people have found relief with GAPS. Um, we don't think that, of course, we don't like blood in anybody's stool, but we also know that GAPS can heal and seal, has the, your greatest potential for healing and sealing the gut and for for making Hmm. for addressing the reason why there's blood in the stools, right? So what I would say for mom who's breastfeeding, if that child is not eating dairy at all yet, which is what I'm getting from your comment, then what you would do is, is obviously stay off of all dairy for at least two or three weeks and then go back and try GAPS dairy, right, which is raw, uh, in the best scenario, it's raw, uh, clean, fresh, raw milk made into yogurt that is cultured for more than 20, for about 24 hours or longer. So there's no lactose in that dairy. So, so you could, mom, you could, um, if you wanted to, up to you, like you need to, you need to make your own decisions. You're the mom and this is your child. So you're right. But at some point, if you wanted to, down the road, several weeks or several months, you could start trying yourself on GAPS Dairy, which is, as I said, raw is best, cultured long, lactose-free, pre-digested, no, um, you know, GMOs, no glyphosate, blah, blah, blah. It's certainly not dairy that you buy in the store. Okay, look at this. Tara is giving you some good things, Marta. She says, before GAPS, I was gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free for baby who was breastfeeding, and now baby is two, and he can now eat cheese and baked cultured dairy. So there is hope for all of us. Thank you, Tara, for sharing that. It's wonderful. You are so welcome, Marta, but, you know, we're here for you. Right, everybody? We are here for you. We can do this. GAPS works when we know how to work it. And there's all sorts of ways uh, that you can help your child heal. Uh, lots of hope in this group. Lots of hope. So also, Marta, if you want to jump on my YouTube channel, <clears throat> Ask the GAPS Chef, you will find 
several um, several uh, videos on dairy in GAPS. In fact, I just made it part of a um, like a guide, a resource guide, or a study guide at the top of this page, our page, this particular page that's all about dairy. So I think I listed several of them there for people just to read, just to watch. You don't have to watch. I'm only talking like this, but you can listen to it while you're nursing, while you're doing the dishes, while you're cooking, while you're whatever you're doing. You can listen and learn, hopefully, things that will be helpful. You're welcome, Alejandra. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm going to go back up here. Biggest advice for working with a baby. You know, Marta, keep hope. All will be well. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Find your, You may want to find a GAPS practitioner who you can work with. Even one session sometimes can really set you on the right path. Up to you. I work with people, lots of beautiful certified GAPS practitioners out there and coaches. And certainly the ones that were just graduated, I train them with with and for Dr. Natasha. So the last ones, uh, the last two classes were have been all of them, but the last two or three classes have been fantastic. All right, let's keep moving here. Hello, Um. Um asks me, in which stages do you have to peel and puree the vegetables and meat stock? Stage one. Stage one. Stage one, we peel the vegetables and we seed them, peel and seed, because we do not want, um, because they're fiber. So stage one, definitely peel and seal, seed all of the vegetables. And then we blend them into blended vegetable soup. So, yeah. And, and also, anytime when you have diarrhea showing up, folks, plants equal diarrhea. I mean, it can also be because of bacterial imbalance or etc. Uh, the introduction of a pathogen, but most of the time plants are going, taking plants out just in general so people all have this. Usually if you take plants out of the diet, diarrhea will resolve. That's just FYI. Okay. Leonie says, my stools are weird yellowy colored. Okay, so that that indicates gallbladder issue and the inability again take this with a grain of salt because I'm not a doctor but we know that the color of the stool is connected to whether or not a person is tolerating fat so the lighter the color certainly yellow certainly gray certainly white and chalky certainly light light brown that that is indicating a difficulty with digesting fat. So what does that mean? That means that you need to eat more fat in order to get the gallbladder at the liver producing bile and the gallbladder to release the bile. That's number one. Number two, we need to get the gallbladder, we need to thin the bile. How do we thin the bile? This is the word according to Monica. We thin the bile with beet kvass, we thin the bile with fermented beets, we thin the bile with juice, beet juice, Beet, 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 beet. Are you all getting this? Beets thin the bile. Beet greens that are juiced thin the bile. Okay, what else can you do? You can take ox bile, which is what Leonie has just said she's doing. Hold on, I've got to find it. Moving, moving, moving. Okay, so it's having a hell of an effect, but I can't tell if it's good or bad. So, so remember, folks, if you're going to take ox bile, if you're going to actually take a supplement of ox bile, watch the amount of ox bile. Meaning, I, again, this is me and how I work with people, I suggest that you start with a low amount of ox bile, meaning I think 125 milligrams might be the lowest. Um, but they make ox bile capsules at 500 milligrams. So if you're taking 500 milligrams and you just started there, it may be too high a dose. So again, with all things gaps, we start with just a little bit. We watch what happens with the body. So, very good idea for you to, Leonie specifically, to take the lowest milligrams dosage of ox bile you can take with a meal that has fat in it 
and once a day and see how you feel. And then we take it with every meal, before every meal. Um, but I really suggest you start low. A lot of people start at 500 milligrams, they blow out their system. That's too strong, but they don't feel well because it's just too strong. Okay, so yes, floating, um, floating weird color means you need to work the gallbladder. All of us need to work, whoever you are needs to work the gallbladder. That means gaps milkshakes, that means uh, beets, beet kvass, uh, beet juice. Um, go slow. If you're going to have beet juice, make sure you dilute it. It can be very, very strong and then, then you'll be vomiting and unhappy with me. That would be bad. So, um, yeah. So again, I would suggest, Leonie, that you go watch again my, uh, my video on extended stage two and what it means. So if anyone is sitting on one stock forever, it's not, unless you are highly reactive, like you have very bad tolerance to all the other stocks, it's best to have different stocks. Like if chicken doesn't work for you, try turkey. If turkey doesn't work for you, try lamb. If lamb doesn't work for you, try beef. If beef doesn't work for you, try bison. If bison doesn't work for you, getting this is like a rap song, yeah? If chicken doesn't work for you, try turkey, right? Like try goose, try duck, try whatever. We don't just sit with one if chicken stock is reactive for you. No problem. Are you reactive? To... Many people are reactive to many things, so I'm not trying to be flip here. But with everyone else, do not, I encourage you, if one stock doesn't work for you, try a different stock. Everybody. Everybody. And if one chicken doesn't work for you, maybe it's the chicken. Just for people to look at. Maybe the chicken is eating soy feed and you're reacting. Maybe the chicken is eating lots of feed and not eating any grass or any bugs. Maybe the chicken is toxic, even if it's quote unquote organic. Oops, I said that. Don't go crazy there, folks. Don't let me drive you nuts with that one. But, right, so everyone, just like everything else, if chicken eggs don't work for you, try duck. If duck eggs don't work for you, try goose. If goose eggs don't work for you, try, tur try turkey. If turkey doesn't work for you, try quail. Just because one egg doesn't work for you doesn't mean all eggs don't work for you, for most people. Just because chicken stock doesn't work for you doesn't mean all the stocks wouldn't work for you. Just because one nut doesn't work for you doesn't mean all the nuts won't work for you or all the seeds won't work for you. Right? We must carry on. We must continue. We must try all the options or not. Up to you. But I'd rather go for the healing. All right. Faria asks, da -da 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 -da. how do I find one of the new GAP certified practitioners you mentioned would love to learn more? So Marta and everyone else, you go to um, Dr. Natasha's website, which is gaps.me. Gaps dot me. That is her website. That's where everyone should be going for any information about anything first. You go there first. Go to the source first. Uh, go to her FAQs. She's written a lot. She may even have written things about baby blood and baby stools there. Marta, I would check it out. Um, you can search in the FAQs on gaps.me. All right. How do you find a new practitioner? You look on the sidebar. So gaps, G-A-P-S dot me, sidebar, certified, find a gaps practitioner. Boom. I believe that all of the gaps practitioners have their certification date um, when they are listed. So you can look there. Many, many gaps practitioners are excellent. In fact, all the old time, many, many, many of the old timers are excellent too. I'm not saying they're not, they're great. Um, and some people that are listed on that site are no longer practicing gaps. Uh, they haven't, they haven't taken themselves off the site yet or whatever. So I'm just suggesting that if you look in the, er, in the uh, earlier, like uh, closer, most recent years, we know that those people, or they should, be practicing because they're so excited that they just graduated and they want to work with people. That's that's what I'm suggesting. 
All right, let's see what else we got here. Hold on. Having fun with cameras. All right. No, ha, no, half. Here we go. La, 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 la. I'm trying to get up here. Let's see. Okay, so... Random question from Kathleen. Hello! Love having homeopathy around as its gaps approve, but it seems like it's almost all has lactose. Is that okay? Yes. Um, it, it, most of them are in those little sugar tablets. They're all lactose. Um, it seems to me that you've got two options uh, with homeopathy. One is don't worry about it and see if you're reactive because the amount of lactose is so small. Um, or find a homeopathic solution, F find a homeopathic in solution, right, a liquid, or use the homeopathy. I'm not sure if you're working with a practitioner or not, but my understanding is that you can put homeopathic pellets, those lactose sugar pill things, I'm saying that, but lactose, uh, the little pellets, into water and then dose from there, in which case the amount of lactose would be like really minuscule. Okay, hope that's helpful. Kathleen, I'm glad you've got homeopathy. It's fantastic. We love it. We love people taking homeopathy for many, many things. Good, 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 good. All right. Byron is wonderful, or Boiron, or Boron, B O I R O N, is fantastic. Yep. She worries about iron overload as a non menstruating. In terms of iron overload, in my understanding, you'd have to eat a pound and a half or two pounds of liver a day for several years, not years, months, to be concerned about iron overload. Iron, unless you have hema, what the heck is that called again? Hemochromatosis, where you actually have an, uh, an iron problem, you uh, go ahead and eat as much red meat as you want. You're not going to not gonna have iron overload. It's just not going to happen. You can't eat enough. And I'm saying like <laughs> you'd have to eat pounds of liver every day for an extended period of time to maybe ever have a problem with iron overload. So, yeah. And unless you're taking an iron supplement, in which case I would worry, I mean, I'm not talking about an iron supplement. I'm just talking about food. No worries with food. That's why we love food for so many reasons. Okay, let's see. Mm, Sumaya, can I make yogurt from raw milk of grass-fed cows that is not biological? Yes. Just get the cleanest stuff you can find. And then, folks, I just have to say, this is a little nuance, which I think will help a lot of people. Um, if you're concerned about grass-fed milk that's not biological, meaning not organic, make kefir. Make kefir. Make kefir. K-E-F-I-R. Kefir is so much more potent, so much stronger um, with microbes than yogurt will ever be. And so it's my understanding that the kefir, the yeast in kefir, could transform uh, any issues with that milk. That's just what I believe will happen. So, all right, I hope that's helpful. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Have you ever used homeopathy for die-off? Homeopathy for die-off. Um, I haven't used homeopathy for die-off, Tara, but you could use histaminum, which is the homeopathic for histamine. Um, again, I'm not a homeopath, so I suggest you get to someone on this group. Um, certainly, Lise Battaglia is a certified GAPS practitioner and a homeopath who's fantastic with GAPS. Um, Melissa Crenshaw is also a homeopath. Um, of course, there's my dear friend Joette Calabrese, who I haven't talked to in so long, but She's not really a gapster, but she's really good at what she does. So you could check with them for dosage, etc. Hey, Anna Clara, good to have you. You're welcome, Kathleen. Okay. Um, 
Is there an optical optimal amount of kefir and sauerkraut to eat every day to get the full benefits, or is more always better? Good question. So, one of the things I like to say to my clients is, you should be able to tolerate. Meaning, the goal is what? The goal is for you to be able, for any human being, to be able to eat as much probiotic food, as much cultured dairy, as much um, uh, fermented uh, vegetables and tonics as they want with no digestive upset. So, I know, you're like, yes, yeah, so what does that mean? Um, so what I like to do is I like to have people shoot for a cup and a half of whatever every day. So a cup and a half of kefir a day. Um, that would be 12 ounces. Certainly eight ounces of kefir a day would be awesome. And maybe half a cup to a cup of sauerkraut. But certainly a cup of kefir a day should keep you really, really well. Yeah. Hey, Dana. Hi, Monica. We used apis and histaminum for die-off reactions. Our homeopath recommends them, and they have been tremendously helpful. Yes. I forgot about apis. Thank you for that. But apis and histaminum. Yep, yep, yep. Go for it, people. My understanding, again, I'm not trained but I've done a lot of reading on homeopathy. I think you would go with a 30C and then that's what I think. That's just me. But again, I'm not trained. If I went off to the store and bought a histamine and apis, in fact, I have apis upstairs, um, for bug bites, swelling, etc. Yeah, I, uh, I always have 30C in the house. That's kind of the easy entry place for homeopathics that I'm aware of. All right. Thank you, Dana. Rock and roll. We love that. All right. We've got a few questions left. Danny's only doing half of 125 milligrams of ox bile. Yeah. I am sorry to hear that they are having such a blowout for you. Okay. I have time for one more question if anybody wants. Then I am off to take my pooch for chiropractic. Yes, even the dog gets chiropractic. I hope you get chiropractic. I hope you get it, chiropractic. I hope you get a regular acupuncture. That is the minimum of what people should be doing. That's according to me. Okay, I've been doing three cups each and every day, so can I cut back without losing the benefits? Yes, absolutely, Anna. Anna Clara, I would go a cup a day. You're good to go. Yep. Of course, I wouldn't do it immediately. I wouldn't go like three cups today of both, and then tomorrow I go to one cup. I mean, right? Just like we stage up, we also decrease down, right? Or your body's going to be like, hey, what's going on? And then you might get constipated, and we don't want any of that. Yes. What about cupping as a treatment? Love it. Everybody, find your treatments. Cupping is a great treatment that usually has to do with detoxification. Um, what was I going to say? Chiropractic is about alignment and making sure that your vagus nerve is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's also about, I mean, there's so many things in chiropractic, but certainly alignment of the spine to make sure you don't have any subluxations because subluxations can turn off organs or at least compromise their ability to work the way they're supposed to. They can also turn off um, nerve supply to different organs, etc. So chiropractic is absolutely, everybody should be going for chiropractic care if you can do it. And also acupuncture because of its ability to keep your energy meridians flowing works with digestion, works with autonomic nervous system balance, works with all sorts of things. So those are my two things. Okay. Why do we add fat to meat stock? We need to add fat to everything. Um, in stage one, you are pretty much just having whatever fat is in the meat stock itself. 
And then when we get to stage two, we are adding fat, 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 fat. In fact, I've said to this group before, one of the things that Dr. Natasha says over and over again when she's teaching these days to almost every question is, the answer is more fat. The answer is more fat. The answer is more fat. Now make sure the fat is clean fat. Fat stores toxins. So we don't want to eat fat from toxic animals. That's a really bad idea. But you need fat for brain function, for lung function, for liver function, for heart function, for hormones. Oh my goodness. Please read the whole thing. I would love everyone to read about fat and cholesterol in here. Get the book, read it. Lots of fat. You know, eight tablespoons a day, folks, if you can do it. That's a half a cup of fat a day in addition to what you're cooking. Yes. Could I talk about different, more, talk more about different treatments and the effects? Hmm, so chiropractic. Hmm, I could. Um, craniosacral, wonderful. Osteopathy, wonderful. They are more about, again, about getting, getting the nervous system back on track so that you are in that beautiful autonomic nervous system balance, rest, and digest. That's really all I've got for the most part. Um, let's talk more about that next week. How's that? Okay, folks, so acupuncture, acupressure, very, very good. For children, they don't do acupuncture. They do something called shoni shin, which is with, um, it is, um, massaging or activating acupressure points, acupuncture points, pardon me, meridian points, etc. All right. So children too can have the benefits for sure. All right, folks. I am so happy to have been with you today. I uh, will see you same gaps time, same gaps channel from what age for children? Acupuncture from, I mean, acupressure from age two. I mean, Take your children in. Get them aligned. I can talk more about this. Maybe we'll do that next week. <clears throat> right? So, and of course, the other things, Anna Clara, quickly, because I have to get to an appointment, is, um, of course, flower remedies, which I did talk about. Flower remedies. All children, can, children, pets, moms, dads, everyone can be on flower remedies. Bach flower remedies, B-A-C-H. Uh, rescue remedy, etc., etc. Flower remedies, really wonderful. Herbs, really wonderful. So yeah, we'll go into that. I'll talk more about that next week. All right. You're welcome, Faria. You're welcome, everyone. Good to have you all with me. I wish you blessings this week. And um, yeah, just keep on keeping on. Be well. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I will see you in a week. Bye, everyone.